So what we have found so far is clearly the tip of the iceberg in that we are finding the, the massive planets. The statistics show that there must be far more, less massive planets than the massive ones we are finding, and those would be the terrestrial planets, planets like the Earth. They're there to be found. Our sensitivity is not there yet. So we look out <coughs> and see objects such as this, giant Jupiters, uh, some systems more than one, some of them orbiting very close to the stars. And <clears throat> the main point is that indeed there are solar uh, planetary systems are not rare at all. They are very ubiquitous. Uh, they're present probably with at least half the stars, maybe many more, confirming those old theories of 44 years ago. Now, <clears throat> This is sunrise on one of those planets. I'm going to show you a lot of artwork today, all, all of it by Lynette Cook, who is a space artist in San Francisco that cooperates with the SETI Institute and many other organizations. Undoubtedly, you have seen her work in sky and telescope and astronomy, and she's been very kind to give me a large set of very recent paintings she's done for a book, which is just about to be published, and I'll show you the cover page for that book at the end of the lecture. But uh, here's sunrise, just to give us an idea of what these other worlds might be like. Uh, you can see the star in the background, very large, because this is a picture that one would get with one of these Jupiter planets, Jupiter-sized planets, orbiting very close to its star. Now, <clears throat> so far the planets we have seen are not suitable for life, because we know Jupiter-like planets do not have solid surfaces. They're very hot inside. Uh, the constituents necessary for life are rare, are perhaps being destroyed all the time in the heat of these bodies. But we know that uh, with these must be many, many small objects presently beyond our detection capability. For instance, these, these uh, uh, planets may have satellite systems, just as our Jupiter does. And uh, those satellites, if large enough, and we have one in our system which is large enough, Titan, will have enough mass to hold an atmosphere. And although they may be satellites, they will have all the necessary constituents for life. Well, what are those? Very simple. Water, organic compounds, carbon-based compounds, and one of many sources of energy that are possible. Starlight, uh, lightning, uh, heat from <clears throat> just uh, the interior of the planet, and so forth. And so we're beginning to glimpse the fact that uh, there may be a greater variety of potentially habitable planets than our old ideas, which had it that only planets very much like the Earth could be supporting life. Now, 44 years ago, we had a concept which was very widespread, widely discussed, and which was probably one of the most wrong concepts in the history of astronomy. And this was the idea that for a star to have life <clears throat> like the life of Earth, <clears throat> it had to be at just the right distance from its star, just the right distance so there could be liquid water, because we thought liquid water was necessary for life. That meant it couldn't be too close to its star because it would be too hot, the water would all be evaporated. It couldn't be too far because then the water would be frozen and we're, we couldn't have liquid water to act as solutions for chemical reactions. And this led to the concept of what was called the continuously habitable zone. And all the astrobiologists who are here remember well the lengthy papers and discussions of the continuously habitable zone and the calculations which showed it was in our system, in fact, very narrow, that the Earth just lucked out by being in it. Uh, <clears throat> and... Uh, there were controversies as to whether clouds would keep a planet warmer or colder and would change the habitable zone and so forth. Well, what we, what we realized finally, and we, it was staring our, ourselves in the face all along, was that there were phenomena which made that whole concept almost meaningless. That there are ways for a planet at almost any distance from its star to be a habitable place. One of the prime ways that this was splashed in our face, splashed in our face, 
was the planet Venus. Back again about 40 years ago, radio telescopes showed that the surface of Venus was at a very high temperature. This was a very strange result because Venus is almost a twin to the Earth in mass and composition. Uh, it's cloud covered at all time, which means that uh, much of the sunlight is reflected. So the amount of sunlight it captures is almost the same as the Earth. And you would expect Venus to be at the same temperature as the Earth and to be a planet suitable for life. And yet the radio telescopes showed it wasn't at a temperature of, say, 70 Fahrenheit, but surprisingly about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was in the early days at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory that I took this on as a project and was amazed to find that when I looked at the dark side of Venus, it was just as warm as the hot side. The night side, and night on Venus lasts 116 Earth days, by the way, <coughs> it, it, uh, the night side was the same temperature as the day side to within one or two degrees. It took 80 hours of observation to establish that, by the way. It was a very difficult measurement. Uh, subsequently, there were spacecraft landings, which showed that the surface was truly 750 degrees, that this wasn't some freakish radio emission that was confusing us. And we quickly recognized, actually Carl Sagan was pioneer in this, that the reason, this was caused by the greenhouse effect. What we know so well today is the greenhouse effect, that the atmosphere of Venus, with almost 100 atmospheres worth of carbon dioxide, has such a powerful greenhouse effect that it keeps the temperature very, very high. And what this means is you could move Venus way out in the solar system and the temperatures would still be high. And you could put it way out and uh, where it should be, much too cold for life, and it would be suitable for life. 